Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. And yeah, uh, time for another transfer stream. It's been a busy day. We've been up early doors, both myself and Chris. I know Chris was out walking his dog early doors so he could get back in time for the match. Um, so we've had the match to contend with uh, and the shit house that is John McGinn. We'll have a chat about that as well. Just thoughts on the match and pre-season so far. We then heard Jack Harrison say, um, we'll see. Uh, when thing, when asked about if he's staying at Leeds United, so we can have a we can have a chat about that, and then we've seen some fresh links as well for some uh, Premier League strikers, not least Ivan Tony, and of course Championship striker currently at Blackburn, Ben Brayton and Diaz. So uh, I just wanted to have a chat with that and uh, a catch up with my good friend Chris uh, from All Leeds TV. Chris, how are you doing, mate? All right. Apart from being tired, mate, yeah, I'm all good. That was yeah, an early tiring, one this morning. I was, yeah, I was stood in the woods with a dog at half four this morning. I was like questioning life choices, but all yeah. good, mate, all good. <laughs> yeah, it was, wasn't it? It was, uh, it was an early wake up. I think I got up at half four. I had my coffee and that. I tell you what I did as well. I had it. I had my coffee. I don't know how I do it, but I drank it right at the bottom, and then I've looked in the bottom of the cup, and there were a lot of floaters in. And I thought, oh, nah. So I've smelt the milk and it was bloody sour, man. I don't know how I managed to drink it, bro. Like, what's going on? Um, I must have been that tired that I've just gone, oh, this is nice. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, what are you, how you been anyway? Obviously, we've not caught up on a stream. Um, I catch, you know, the odd video of all Leeds TV. I've not seen you about on there for a bit. Uh, what's your opinion on pre-season transfers? Where's your head at with regards to Leeds United at the minute? Uh, pretty positive, mate, to be honest. I think the transfer window's been very decent so far. I still yeah. think we're maybe two signings away from me saying it's a 9 or 10 out of 10 for a window. Yeah. But it's nice to see the club made moves early in the window, which was a big thing, because we know what it's like, mate. At Leeds, normally we're all scrambling around on deadline day and then massively disappointed when the club tell us not to go to bed and then sell someone. <laughs> so... It's uh, I think it's really good, mate. I like the way the new signings are bedding in. They, I think a few of them look quality in that first half today. Really like Rocker. I think he he's going to be some player. Adams as well looks like he'll settle in quick. And yeah. uh, Christensen, he's going to be the new cult hero in my opinion. I yeah. think the big things coming from him, mate. He's an absolute tank of a man. Yeah, he is. He is. You're right. And you mentioned Matt Rocker there. I think he's probably my favourite. It was Tyler Adams, but having seen. Um, them, them, you know, out on the pitch. I've been really, really impressed with Mark Rocker in pre-season. I think just having a left footed, um, just having you know a right and left footer in the centre of the park gives you so yeah. much. I didn't realise just how how much it would give us. But Mark Rocker's probably been my standout. What is it, Christensen for you or no? It's Rocker for me as well, yeah. mate. I just he's. He's a very David Batty-ish, but he's got a pass on him as well. And that's yeah. not me slamming David Batty. David Batty was very good at what he did. But Rock has got that steel about him, exactly yeah. where we need it in the middle of that pitch. And, yeah, I like that left foot, right foot combo. Yeah. Very similar to how I like my centre-backs. Yeah, yeah. One either footed, so we can go out either way. Um, yeah. I think I, him and Adams and Forshaw the other day, to be fair. Forshaw looked and, good, yeah. Yes, mate, yeah. So, positive signs for me. I know we've sold Rafa and... Calvin, but clearly they both felt it was the right time to leave and move on to, you know, Calvin wants to go and win things at Man City. Yeah. It's always been a dream of Rafa's to play at Barcelona and can't be grudging that. No. So we've strengthened for me, the squad's a lot yeah. deeper now. So yeah. it's all good, mate, in my opinion. I think we're not far away from having a far better squad than what we did last season. Agreed. I couldn't. I couldn't agree with you more. Just in order for it to move up to like the a, a brilliant window, what do you think we need, mate? What would be your left your, back? Uh, yeah. Not not just because Furpo's like Bambi on ice a lot of the time, because <laughs> th th there is still a slight, slight, slim, really slim chance that he may come good. But obviously, he's out for eight weeks now. So, yeah. and I just don't think Leafs a Premier League left back. I thought he yeah. did okay in spells today, yeah. but I don't think he's a Premier League left back, mate. Leo Helder needs more time there if he's going to be covered. So yeah. we need a left back and we need a striker. We can't we can't rely on Paddy to be fit all the time as much as I love Bamford. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we can't rely on him to be fit. And I would like to, I know obviously we're going to discuss one of them anyway. It sounds like Sonny Perkins might be done, but yeah, I would I would like to see a Cali Moendo or someone like that, or CDK, of course, come through yeah. the door just to strengthen the options up front. But for yeah. sure. 
For sure. I think the left back's pivotal as well, isn't it? Especially when you consider the right wingers or right forwards that are out there in the league, you know, um, Salah, you know, that you could go on all day, like really. Um, it, there is, you know, Mares. There's so many talented, but even not at the top teams as well, you just go down, like Ishmael Asar, even at Watford. I know he was rubbish at us, but there's, there's basically decent wingers all over the Premier League. So if you don't have a have a, a decent left back, you're, you're up shit creek, really. And I think one of the most vulnerable areas of the pitch for Leeds United is, of course, at fullback due to how we play under Marsh. So it's definitely something we need to we need to address. Do you think we will? Do you think the club will? I think Jesse Marsh has made the right noises that we will yeah. look to bring one in. So I do expect, I expect a striker and a left back. And, you know, if I was being really greedy, then someone like a Ben Foster on a free, not to yeah. go in at number one, but someone with experience to be around Melier and just support him more than anything. Yeah. But that's just me being greedy, mate. Yeah, no, no. Uh, agreed, agreed. Uh, hopefully we will get that done. Obviously the game happened. Uh, thoughts on John McGinn's uh, challenge on Archie Gray? Everyone's playing playing hell at the minute. He's got small man syndrome, Manny, that bloke. <laughs> and I've seen the tackle that all the Villa fans are on about being retribution for. It was a yeah. good tackle by Archie Gray that yeah, no one yeah, about was so. a bad one. But yeah. he might have put his foot on the ball, but he went studs first. Yeah. He's gone over the top. And in the Premier League, for me, that's a red card. And I know Villa fans will come at us and go, oh, you know, same old leads. Mm. It, it is what it is. And if... It, it was the other way around. They'd be screaming red card yeah. if Archie Gray had gone over the top of the ball and smashed McGinn's ankle. So yeah, it's so funny. The injury's not that bad. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. And apparently it's not. Um, apparently he's avoided serious injury, which is good because I think he's got a part to play this season, Archie. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's quite funny because we sort of have a we've had a love hate relationship with Villa. There was a lot of love there after you know Grealish and. And Calvin were best mates, we were hearing, and then Tyro Mings with that defensive block. And then in one game, all that love's just yeah. gone. <laughs> yeah, we're back in the championship, aren't we? Just complete exactly. hatred. Yeah, uh, we can't stand each other again. So it's going to be a tasty affair come uh, come the Premier League fixture for sure. I'm sure I'm sure John McGinn will be warmly welcomed at Ellen Road yes. when, when they tip yeah. off. <clears throat> no, I agree. I agree. I was saying like when we were doing the watch along, thinking, oh, I don't mind Tyrone Mings now, <laughs> do you know what I mean? But all of a sudden in the in the blink of an eye, that's all changed. But uh, the main talking point, obviously we lost the game, Chris, but the main talking point. Um, was afterwards, obviously. I've done a video on it earlier. You were on the watch along in the comments at the time as well. Uh, Jack Harrison was asked a question, you know, can you can you put the Leeds fans at rest or, you know, can you give them the answer they want to hear? Are you staying? And um, his response was, we'll see. What was your initial reaction and, and, and what are your thoughts on it now? My initial reaction was, well, that's Jack looking for a move then. That was my... Yeah. That was my yeah. snap call on the spot where yeah. if I had a Twitter account, I'd have been on there with all the other Leeds fans playing playing hell. Yeah. But then listening to it again and what he said afterwards, like about, but things are looking good. I think he's actually maybe talking about his renewed contract or improved yeah. contract yeah. that's the rumour is going around that's happening. So I don't want to sell Jack. I think he's got a real part Same to play thing. under Marsh. Yeah, We've lost Calvin and Rafinha. I, I wouldn't want to lose another sort of big player from this squad. Mm -hmm. I don't expect him to go, but if Newcastle come in with 30, 35 million, you can't, well, we can't expect the club not to at least sit down, do the oh, math, yes. yeah. and see if there's an option out there to replace him with. Either way, it needs to be done quick, whether that's yeah. new contract signed or sold on. But personally, I don't see him going, but I've been wrong before and will be yeah. again, so who knows. That's the thing, isn't it, as well? And I've I've pondered this myself for a while. It's like no one wants to sell him. No one actively wants to sell him. I think if you've still got Rafinha, then you could say, OK, well, I don't mind it. But the fact that we've lost, lost Rafinha and Calvin, it's like, no, we can't afford to lose, you know, another top player. I think I've seen from LUFC data, Chris, earlier on, he said 55% uh, of Leeds United goals came from Harrison and Rafinha. So if you remove them and these new signings don't hit the ground running, and I know it's only pre-season, but I've not seen anything from Sinny yet. That's just my opinion. I've not, I'm not expecting him to start against Wolves and tear it up is what I'm saying. It's going to take him a bit of time is, from what I've seen so far. So if you take out Harrison and, and Rafinha, 55% of your goals is it's a big chunk. So no one wants to lose him, but we also have to be a bit realistic. And like you've said, if, you know, as has been reported, 
that Leeds United don't want to sell him, but they have an asking price or wouldn't sell him for any less than 35 million. I think if Newcastle came in with 30 plus add-ons, etc., <clears throat> we've got to accept, like you've said, that the club are gonna have a conversation, aren't they, and weigh it up because it's it. We only paid 11 million for him, 11, 12, whatever it is. You know, can he be is he replaceable? Yeah, he is, let's be honest. And mm -hmm. At that stage, when you receive that sort of money, there's a there's a chance that they could accept it, right? Yeah, 100%, mate. We know what model we're following as, yeah. as a club. Um, and a lot of it will, will come down to what Newcastle throw on the table. I do think he is replaceable. Mm. We've got Mr. Decision Maker, Dan James, who actually likes being out on the left, but I personally don't think it overly suits him because he's got no. too much to think about. But <laughs> um, we don't know. Can Sinny play there? Um yeah. Who is going to come good? I agree with you. We've not seen much yet, but no. I think the kid's going to be an absolute baller for us. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got Somerville, potentially, who can switch out. We've got there. Rodrigo as well that <clears throat> looks to be playing on. The, I know, listen, I'm not saying, like, Rodrigo's going to give us more, but in terms of, like, if Jack Harrison was to go, would it, would it weaken the squad? Yes, but... Obviously, I, I expect him to start, but... It's not like, I don't know, it's not like losing a Rafinha or a Calvin. I don't know, he is replaceable. It's just... I think you're right, mate. I think that's it. And he is replaceable. Someone like a Gakpo who could bring yeah. in for similar money that we'd sell Jack for. Yeah. And for me, looks potentially, it's always potentially, you never know yeah. until they arrive in the Premier League and do something, could be an upgrade potentially. Yeah. So exactly, yeah. The club have pro clearly already, by the sounds of it, spoken about Gakpo and considered him. Yeah. So if we could go nab in for thirty million pound and we get thirty plus add-ons for Jack, that might might be seen as a good business decision. Yeah. So who knows, mate? Who knows? But I think these fans going straight for the board, which I saw online this morning, as soon as Jack said that, well, oh, that's them cashing in again. Well, oh, doing doing us a dirty. I'm like, football's a business, whether we let as fans yeah. like it or not, and yeah. the club's got to look after the club. Yeah. So <clears throat> and. From from Harrison's perspective, do you think he could have dealt with it differently, Chris? Like I'm yeah. thinking, just shut it down. Just, just just shut it down. Yeah, exactly. I'm happy at Leeds. Yeah, uh, I'm a Leeds United player. End of story. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It was a it's a silly comment that can easily be taken out of context and potentially yeah. has. We don't know the meaning behind it because he opened the door and then didn't shut it, and we're all like, oh, oh what does that mean? And mm. obviously, everyone then flipped out online yeah, immediately, yeah, yeah. which was fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> it was, man, it was. I mean, can you understand from, from Harrison's perspective as well, like why it would be an attractive prospect? Because I can. Yeah, I can, mate. One, I think, look, Newcastle are going places. Yeah. We can, we're, we're hoping to go places as Leeds United, of course. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a slower building process yeah, for yeah, us. Yeah. We haven't got £300 billion pounds or whatever <laughs> the conglomerate are worth. Um, yeah. Whereas Newcastle in one, two seasons could genuinely be challenging in and around challenging that top four for me if they yeah, recruit yeah. well. So, and let's be honest, they're going to wave big finger, figures under his nose as well, uh -huh. wage wise. Chris Wood's on a hundred grand a week at Newcastle. Chris wow. Wood. That's mad, so, isn't it? At the end of the day, mate, again, as much as we don't like it as fans around one of our team uh, players leaving, football is a short career and you've got to make your money while you can. And Jack's been a good player for us for yeah, he has. Yep. for a few seasons now, including all his loan spells. So if he sees the best way out, then one, I don't want players that have had the head turned because I don't Same. think you ever get the best out of them, whether that's a Calvin, a Rafa, a Jack or anyone. And the club can make decent money on him. He goes and gets his payday and we bring someone in to replace him. So mm -hmm. I don't want him to go, but if he does, it's not the end of the world for me. No, no, I agree. I agree. Of course, like you say, we're not actively. I'm not actively advocating the the sale of Jack Harrison. No. If it was next summer, it would make sense. I'll say, yeah, another one, and then we then we regroup and go again. Yeah. But right now, I don't think it's the best. But listen, money talks, and you know, if a bid comes in like thirty to thirty five million, I think the club will 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 at least have a conversation and likes. Like you've said yourself, the club will already be looking at alternatives just in case that bid comes in. You know, Victor will be like, right, OK, if this happens, then this is what we're going to have to do. Of course, we know the, the 
the top target, if you like, on the agenda right now mm. is is the striker. Uh, we know about CDK. Um, what are your thoughts on just just briefly, really, Chris? Like, obviously, there's some Leeds fans that say he wants Milan, so therefore, why do we want him? But what are your thoughts on CDK? So, because for me personally, I'm like, if we can get him, you get him because he mm. he looks different gravy. Yeah, I, I, I'm I completely agree. I've seen your uh, streams, mate, about CDK, and I complete completely agree. And again, seeing fans saying, "Oh, you said oh, you don't want Leeds, you want Milan." I'm not being funny, but if I had no allegiance to Leeds or Milan and both yes. came knocking for me at the minute, I'd be like, well, I want Milan as well because they've just yeah, won the yeah. league or whatever and they're in the Champions League. Yeah, Leeds yeah. are still in a building process. So it's up to Milan. They've got to come and match our mm. offer. If they don't, then I'm sure he would come to Leeds and play in the Premier League and he would give everything. I would yeah. love him to come because I agree with you. I think he's different gravy. Yeah, still a kid, loads of potential as well to even push that ceiling. Mm. Would push Bamford hard, which is what Bamford needs, I think, this season. Yeah, someone agree. on his coattails, along with Joffy, obviously, we shouldn't forget mm. him. Um, so yeah, if the club can get him over the line, I think that'd be a hell of a signing for the money that's being talked about. But if he chooses Milan, I'm not going to then start. No, yeah, exactly. him for it. <laughs> no, I agree, mate. I agree. Um, I think even if he came and he was here for two seasons or whatever, like that's where we are. We have to sort of accept it a little bit. That's where we are as a football club these, right now. These are the these are the exact type of players that the club are looking at, right? So Cine, for example, is another yeah. one of those players. Maybe probably here for two, three seasons, and then we'll sell him for two, three if he has a good time here. Yeah. We'll sell him for two, three times what we bought him for. That's the yeah, model yeah. we're working here. That's outside of the top four, maybe top six. That's how football clubs have to work now yeah. in, in the Premier League. It's just a fact. We might not like it, but it's just the way it is. Yeah. We don't want to be going down the Ridsdale route of just throwing everything at it, failing, and then us going back to Stoke or, you know... Lincoln or God knows where on a Tuesday mm. night in the peeing down yeah. rain in League One, miserable. Mm. So we have to understand the philosophy that the club are doing it uh, by. I think it's the only way you can do it nowadays with the money mm. that's in football, unless you've got big backers. Uh, you know, a Villa, Villa, for example, they, they can throw yeah. a bit more money at it because they've got exactly. the cash heavy. But yeah. We can't. Even when the 49ers do take over, we still won't have that much no. capital, capital to spend. No, exactly. The model work, the model works for me, mate. I think yeah. not every signing is going to be great. I think Victor's maybe 50 50 on signings before this window. We can't judge these yet, obviously. No, no, but we'll see, mate. I think. And if CDK comes for that, is it a 30 million? The talk, something about? like that, yeah, about 30 million, mate. Yeah, I think that's good business because again, that kid in two, three seasons could be a could be a hundred million pound player if he kicks yeah, on from yeah. where he's at now. So it's good. It's good business to me. Yeah, I agree, mate. I couldn't agree more. Obviously, if he's not coming, we've been linked to Cali Mwendo as well. It looks like that's another one, but apparently he might be going on the pre-season tour of Japan. I think. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Galtier has been impressed with him, so that's another one that could cause problems. And maybe that's why today we've had fresh links. So I'm going to read a couple of articles out, Chris. Okay. Um, we'll start. We'll start with Ben Bray and Diaz. He keeps always being linked. He was linked under Bielsa. Um, I've got my opinions on him. We'll have a chat about it. I think West Ham and Leeds, the same. Anyway, are interested in him. 22 goals and three assists from 37 uh, league matches last season for Blackburn. Uh, apparently, he's waiting an offer to leave. Obviously, he went to Chile, and that's what's took his game to the to the next uh, level. It was Ben Brayton, weren't it, before? Now it's Ben Brayton awesome. Diaz, and he's doing Pepsi commercials over in Chile and stuff. Um, we know Bielsa was a fan. I, I don't know what the actual asking price is, but I swear Blackburn wants something like thirty million for him. Mm. For me. And I'm, I might get hammered for this, but I always remember like David Nugent smashing goals in the championship and then they make that step up and they're not quite got it. I think, yeah, yeah, exactly, you know. Um, Dwight Gale is <laughs> yeah. another one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just not sure I'd be happy with the signature of Ben Brett and Diaz, especially at like 30 million. There are a lot of people that disagree with me and I can see some in the chat as well saying he would be a right signing. I don't know what your thoughts are on uh, Ben Brett and Diaz, mate. I'm not... Uh, yeah, I'm not sold on him either, mate, to be fair. I just... Mm. 
I think that's a lot of money to outlay for someone like yeah. him. I think people think he might be a sexier footballer than what he is because he's stuck Diaz on the end of his name. Exactly now. right. That's my yeah. thought process as well. I genuinely think he's done that for like the commercial opportunities yeah, out in Chile and stuff like that. Yeah. He's, he's Ben Brereton. And before so, he stuck Diaz on his name, I don't think anyone knew about him. <laughs> so so true. I just think if we're going to spend around 30 million quid, mate, there's better options out there, personally. Yeah. For me. Yeah, I know. I agree. I'm just looking actually here. So uh, Sevilla chasing him, but only want to pay half of his valuation, which is actually 20 million. But I even for me, bro, I even think 20 million for him is still too expensive. There's no guarantees he would come and do it uh, for Leeds United or in the Premier League for that matter. And if Seville want to take a take a punt on him, then then uh, let them do that. It's quite funny, actually, the story behind how he went to play for Chile. Do you know it? No, no. So it was a guy on Football Manager that actually was the Chile manager and he found out that through somewhere, like he had an international link to Chile genuinely and then it was put out there and then they approached him and before you know it, he's now um, he's now playing for Chile, yeah, and on Pepsi commercials. So there you go. And like I say, Brilliant. fair play to the guy putting Diaz on end of his name because the commercial deals in the got, I bet, he's, I bet he's buzzing. And I guess... If he did get a move to a top club or to the Premier League, it probably would take that to another level for him in uh, yeah. in Chile. But it's not one I I think Leeds United should be looking at personally, mate. And I don't think we will. Like the links from Sports Witness, it's not the most reliable. Um, but I thought we would have a chat about it. Um, I'd much prefer someone like a Cali Mwendo than, yeah. uh, than Ben Brett and Diaz. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of people here saying, oh, it was crap second half of the season. Still get uh, did get a few. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Diaz would be 8 to 10 million tops. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I think that'd be more in the price range. Um, bad signing, flash in the pan. I think so as well. There's some yeah. people that disagree there. I'm trying to have a look. Uh, I did see some. Um, there must be few and far between. Maybe I made that up. I did see someone <laughs> say that he would be a good signing. Uh, it's somewhere anyway. But the one that really piqued my interest, Chris, was a link. Um, I seen a, a Newcastle journalist put it out there uh, to say that Leeds United, along with Newcastle, were exploring the option of looking at Eve Antoni at around about 30 million. I then Googled Eve Antoni, and there's a lot of links uh, to Manchester United as well. Um, apparently, Manchester United are looking at him. Um, which I think that's, that's where strikers go to die now, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, uh, swapping Ronaldo for Eve Antoni, it's uh, it's quite the thing. But Man United are not the team they once was for sure. But apparently, Man United are keeping tabs on him. Um, Newcastle may be having a look. Obviously, Newcastle released him, if you remember, or sold him on, I think, to Peterborough, and then he, he, he's made his way up to the Premier League with Brentford. Um, the same that Leeds United are sniffing round. For me, I think he's a great talent, and he is a Premier League striker. You know, for me, if you're going to spend money on a proven... Like, we're taking a lot of gambles, which we have to do because of the money that we're in. Uh, and the money that we have. But if you could get Ivan Tony for 30 million for me at 26 year old and for someone that 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 can link the play, can hold it up, can score goals, can definitely take a penalty, he's great at that as well. I think it'd be a no brainer. And I know it's only little old Brentford, but I'd love to take him off him as off them as well, mate, to be fair. Yeah, um, that, that would be a positive of it. It would, wouldn't it? Uh, what do you what do you think to Tony, mate? Would you be interested in that? I'd be interested in Tony the footballer, but I'm on the flip side, I'm not interested in signing Tony the person. I think yeah. he's a, a bit of a whopper, as we've yeah. seen with his various faux pas on social media and all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, and I think he's made his feelings clear about Leeds before. I know he was only biting back at us at yes. singing Mind the Gap and all the rest of it. So it can be construed as banter, of course, and we get carried away as fans and all the rest of it. So... But as a footballer, he's already had a season in the Premier League. So if we're talking Brereton Diaz and Tony as two are in and around the 30 million mark, yeah. you're picking Tony the footballer. Yeah. yeah, You know he can handle the Premier League and he's going to get goals. Uh -huh. I just wish he wasn't a big douchebag. And then I'd be like, yeah, get him signed up. <laughs> yeah, I know But it, it changes, doesn't it, when he becomes your douchebag? It always yes, does. Exactly. This is what I'm saying. And I think if he was asked... 
who do you play for like he was in that time and he went oh you don't need to know who I play for when he was asked about uh oh Chris is I'm just saw the camera out, mate I can still hear you <laughs> he's going on a bit of a rave there like a bit of a maze up um but Tony yeah 26 enjoyed a productive season with Brentford in the Premier League 12 goals and five assists and I think at times as well he was injured uh for for parts of it um, key figure, obviously, in the Thomas Frank side, um, but their resolve could be tested by an offer of thirty million or above. I've seen someone say like fifty million. I'm not sure um, they'd get anywhere close to that. Obviously, Newcastle interested. Um, I think it's like a goal involvement every other game, which isn't bad in the Premier League. Um, and I think where my head's at, mate, if we can get Ivan Tony. I think I would prefer him to Cali Mwendo. Do you disagree with that? Well, again, we're talking about Cali Mwendo, who's one of the top clubs in Europe, whose manager seems to like him. But again, everyone complains, you know, we need Premier League experience. So, and he hasn't got that. So, again, if I was tossing up between the two, I'd probably land right on the knife edge of the coin mm. because I like the idea of Cali Mwendo. I think he's maybe got a higher ceiling than Tony. But for right here, right now, Premier League proven, you're probably going to fall sat on the side of Tony, right? So, yeah. And if I'm being greedy, let's get both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice. That'd be nice. But like Dylan says, don't you think he's too similar to Bamford play style-wise? But I think <clears throat> potentially, mate, but we, we, need, we need someone anyway because I don't see Bamford playing 38 games for me personally. You know, you could argue CDK is similar to Bamford stylistically. Of course, Bamford could play a number of positions, but they're very similar and them two could play together. I don't see why uh, Tony and Bamford couldn't either. I think as well in this system that we play, he knows where the back of the net is, Ivan Tony, for me. And um, I'd be I'd be well on board with it, honestly. I, I know there's probably a lot of Leeds fans that wouldn't because of, like you've mentioned, and Leeds United are quite big on attitude and... You know, uh, and players, um, what can you say? Players, I don't know, personalities, they are quite big on that. But but for me, it, I, I, do you think 30 million? Do you think Brentford would entertain 30 million? I think Brentford are in, a, in big danger of going down this yeah. season. I do. And I've been bitten in the arse with that before because I said they'd go down last season as well. Yeah. But I think they're one of the danger clubs. And I think if you, they've just had a new stadium built, which they had the first season in last year, I think they're going to surely be going to be looking to recoup a little bit of money somewhere. And if someone comes waving £30 million in a club like Brentford's face, mm. again, watch like we've talked about with Jack Harrison and us, if someone comes waving £30 million at us, they've got to at least sit down and have that discussion, yeah, right, yeah. in the boardroom and, and see what they can do. Mm. So... I think they would at least entertain it. I think they'd try and push it. I think if we went with 30 million, they'd be like, well, we want 35 or whatever, but that's yeah. their right. He's their player. So if we could get it in and around 30 million, I'd be okay. As much as I dislike the man intensely, I just, I'd be okay with it from a footballing standpoint because he would get goals. He would mm. get goals. <clears throat> just looking at their, their transfer records currently at 30 million for Ollie Watkins. Um, so you would argue, like, I think it would be around about the same figure. I don't know how they could command more for Tony than a Watkins, although maybe, you know, Watkins hadn't had a season in the Premier League at that point. I think he just had that great season. Ben Brentford obviously didn't get promoted. Yeah. And then he was bought by Villa for 30 million. Maybe with Ivan Tony having a season in the Premier League, scoring 12 goals, showing he can do it in a not great side, although they were comfortable in the end, maybe they would want upwards of that. But I do think it's something that, that Leeds United could could get involved in. But like the teams that are linked, West Ham, Newcastle, I think they'd be, you know, more favourites to do the deal from Leeds. Do, do you think Leeds United would entertain paying that price for, for someone in the Premier League? Or do you think we'd just go out to the, to the European market where we seem to be getting linked? I don't think he fits our recruitment policy. Mm -hmm. I think we are big into the European markets like we've seen yeah, with yeah. the purchases we've made. So, again, I think if we were, and we are looking to spend around 30 million, because that's obviously what we've offered around that for CDK. So, and I think 21 million for Callum Wendo, I think is, is the muted figure. 
So I do see us probably hitting Europe up for a striker. But again, if, if you know, Auto might put the feelers out there and just go and have a word with Brentford and say, you know, if we came at you with this kind of cash, would you entertain it? And mm. You know how quick things can move. I mean, 100%. No, no one had heard of, uh, of Cine a few days ago and all of a sudden he was getting off his little private jet at Leeds Bradford. So What's you never know. Yeah. But I do think Brentford would entertain... Thirty million and a one pound, so then it breaks their transfer record. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Man. Let's just uh, address Seto because the club's set up by the, the 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 chats fuming at him for continuously putting in Maxwell Corner. So so you stop spanning. We'll have a chat uh, about Maxwell Corner. I don't think it's one Leeds United that are interested in or uh, are going to entertain. I can understand why people would want him. I get that. Um, I think he might be on his way to Everton. Um, I think he'll be on decent wages. I think Leeds United looked at him previously, rightly or wrongly, went for Junior Firpo. I don't think we'll go back in for Maxwell Corner seat. Or I don't know what what you think, um, Chris. No, I, I don't want him, mate. To be honest with you, yeah. I, think the, I think the bloke's an absolute melon. <laughs> just, just, I think he's, he's he's thicker than a whale omelet, isn't he? And I know that doesn't mean he can't play football, but <laughs> again, I just I'm just not sure he's a Leeds United player. Um, yeah. And again, I can understand people. Shouting his name up, but yeah, just personally not for me, mate. And I don't think Leeds would would go and spend probably the cash needed and the wages needed to secure his services because I think no, his I agent don't. an absolute like screamer for demanding high wages and stuff mm. like that. So yeah, I don't I don't see it, mate. But I can no. understand people saying his name. Yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah, same here. I I can as well. But I think I've I've read that Everton might be looking at him, mate. So nah. Cito. He might be on his way to Everton, pal. So tell you what, mate, Everton are back in danger next season. Yeah, I think so too. Their business hasn't been great, and the ones they've been linked to haven't been great. I don't think. Mm. And then when you've got him in charge as well, mate, it's, done, it's not good, is it? No, no, he's not the best. Um, obviously, Sonny Perkins looks to have been done. Uh, mm. Fabrizio Romano um, tweeted out earlier on to say that English midfielder Sonny Perkins had just signed a contract and completed medical test as a new Leeds United player. Apparently Spurs were looking at him and not a host of clubs. I don't know what happened to the Spurs link. I was talking to Matt and apparently he's a Spurs fan, but for whatever reason that fell through. He left West Ham and now he's going to be joining Leeds United. The agreement is completed and will be announced very soon. So again, another great young talent, mate, that's that's choosing or opting to come to Leeds United. We're, we're stacked with him at the minute, Darko JB. Um, you know, Archie Gray, we've got Somerville, we've got Joffy, we've got Greenwood, we've got Sonny Perkins, you've got Louis Bate. Um, the future looks bright, right? Oh, big time, mate. Yeah, and I think yeah, Sonny Perkins coming in will be a real, real catch for us. Um, yeah, because I like the look of young Darko for from his minutes yeah. the other night against Brisbane. He looks like he could be a proper baller for us. And bring the Sonny Perkins in, who's I think had a Premier League appearances, hasn't he? He's had a few. Yeah. Played in the Europa League. I think he's the young, second youngest West Ham player to ever re represent West Ham in the Europa League. Playing so there's a bit of pedigree there already at 18 yeah, years yeah. old. So we're bringing him in, mate. I mean, West Ham aren't happy about it. I've seen that. No. And it will go to these tribunals and stuff because they've invested in him. And So we will have to pay some kind of compensation for him. Yeah. But I think he could be a wicked signing, mate. I do. And one... A youngster, much like Joffy and the others you named, that are going to be straightening around the first team, not yeah. thrown in the under twenty threes for two, three seasons. These are kids yeah. who are going to be banging in around the first team immediately. So, mate, the future is very bright at this club from a, a young kid point of view. Certainly, as I did say, midfielder, but it's more of a, a second striker. Can uh, can play off the left wing and also centre forward. You are right, insane as well. He has played in the Premier League. He only had three minutes, mind, but he did come yeah. on. Um, but twice in the Europa League, totally 99 minutes. So, you know, he's done all right there. Two decent appearances last season in the Europa League. Um, and listen, you know, David Moyes doesn't give a lot of youth a lot of chance. At like one of Corey's things, you know, when I speak to Corey regularly, it's the same 11 all the time. So for him to give someone a chance shows that, you know, he's he's well thought of. And obviously we've seen the statement that they put out there. That mm. You don't put them statements out for, for, for a nobody, if that makes sense. It's a case mm. of we're really, really unhappy about losing this top talent. So uh, Sonny Perkins definitely one to get excited about. And I think 
you know, I'm I'm hoping that the, the Premier League 2 side, the under-21s, they're not in the Premier League 2 anymore, but I hope they do well next season because I think they suffered, obviously, due to Bielsa last season, needing all the young ones with him in the first team. And and that's what got us relegated in the end, really, isn't it? So it, it, I think it's nice to have that disconnect sometimes. Yeah, I agree, mate. It is. We had to basically draft, I think, by the end, the tea lady and the kit man onto the bench, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was bad, wasn't it? With a pair of boots. So, I mean, we were drastically unlucky last season with injuries, yeah. regardless of, you know, or small squad that Bielsa wants or not. Mm. We were just drastically unlucky. If we'd have had a squad of 28, we'd have still been unlucky last season with the amount of injuries we had. Yeah. So, it's one of those things. And it did, unfortunately, leak down onto the 20, 23. So, I think at one point, we're basically playing 18, 16-year-olds, stuff yeah. like that to put a team out. So they'll bounce back this season. They'll they'll come straight back up. They'll have a good season. Um, players like Perkins will probably get plenty of minutes in that team yeah, as well as being yeah. around the first team. So again, mate, I'm not. It's upsetting for them. No one wants to be relegated, but mm. I think we'll have a good season this season. It'll bring the kids on again. And I yeah. think Jesse's big on his youth, isn't he? As well. So yeah, he is, man. Yeah, the mm. fact that Darko JB looks to be close and Alf, uh, Archie Gray as well. He's, he looks like he's going to give these a chance. We've got Sam Greenwood, Joffy, etc. So as long as they're managed right, I think why not, mate? I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be uh, a good season. Uh, what are you? You know, looking at how we are now, mate, what are your thoughts for the season ahead? Where do you, do you see Leeds United entertaining a relegation battle? I got a few Brentford fans because I wound them up. Because um, I've seen a lot of them saying that Leeds United would be a step down. And I was like, these people do realise they're getting relegated next season, don't they? Like, And obviously a few of them bit and seem to think we're going to be in a relegation fight because we've lost our two best players. Where, where do you see Leeds United? I've said anywhere between 10th and 13th, and I think that's a decent season after last season because yeah. we've a lot of new players in the door this season. Obviously, we've lost lost two of our key players, but we've a lot of new in, so there's that bedding in period. I don't think we'll flirt with relegation this season. People can call me an optimistic fan, but if I'm not optimistic now before we've kicked a ball, <laughs> will I ever be? Um, but I think a nice, steady, safe by March season will do me quite nicely after last season because I needed yeah. a break after last season. I yeah. was a man at the end. Mm. So I do anywhere around that mid table, mate, I think it shows improvement. It shows that we a bit more investment. Then we can go again. We can sell a, maybe a Jack Harrison, then take good money, yeah. reinvest, follow the model again, and then push on for that top half. So that's, that's where I take mate, And I think that's a, a solid season under a, Still a newish manager with a lot of new players in the squad. Yeah, agreed. I would love that, mate. I would love that. If we can get into the top 10, it would be an amazing season. But 10th to 14th, in and around there, I'm good. As long as we don't flirt with relegation, we'll be all right. We've got a comfortable, comfortable-ish start to the season. So I think, you know, we need points on the board. and um, We'll see it. We'll see how we get on. Um, it's been great to chat to you, Chris. What I want to ask you, though, pal, like, by, I don't know, Who's going to be the next in the door? Who's going to be the next in the door for Leeds United? Ooh, good question. I think the next in the door is a striker. I think we're yeah. nearer to a striker than we are a left back. Yeah. Who that is, I think a lot of it depends potentially on CDK's decision over the next couple of days and mm. how Milan respond. I think tomorrow potentially is a big day because if Milan come in with a match that offer, then that's that one dead in the water, it's done. Yeah. And then it's, can we convince a Calimuendo to leave yeah. PSG or do we have to go looking elsewhere? So I think the striker's the next in the door and I think, just because I think we've been pursuing that for longer and then let's get that left back in within the next week, 10 days as well and then mm. I think the squad looks good, I really do. Uh, the only disappointment from this window for me, mate, is Charlie Creswell going out on loan. That really yeah. disappointed me. Because I oh, thought really? he was close. Yeah, I thought he was close, mate. But I can understand it happening. I think a season in the Championship, where he's probably going to be Millwall's best player, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I think it'll do him the world of good, and I think we'll benefit from that. We're very much looking at the Ben White type of thing with, that Brighton did. So, but being selfish now. However, seeing Robin Cock in at centre back finally mm. is a joy to see, and I think he's going to have a really big season for us. So, I'm less upset now than I was at the time about Charlie going. But 
as long as he stays injury free and smashes it out of the park, which I'm sure he will. I mean, he's not going to get injured. The man's built like an absolute brick crap house, isn't he? So, mm. um, if he has a good season for Millwall, which I'm sure he should, then we reap the benefits. And then Millwall will yeah. be going, sell us Ben White, sell us Ben White, <laughs> yeah. sell, us, sell us Charlie, sell us Charlie, like we all did with Ben White. Yeah, yeah 60 million. 60 million. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think, look, I, I tried to get odds on him getting championship team of the season, but Paddy Power or Sky wouldn't give me odds on it, the Chebs. Um but yeah, just uh, look. I think I think it'll be Cali Mwendo, but I hope it's Charles Tiketele. Mm. Um, like you say, the striker's the next one in. And um, Phil did an athletic article a couple of days ago where he said, "Look, Charles Tiketele is the one that has been the one they want for some time." And they'd bring him in tomorrow if they could. The no club Bruges valuation, which is thirty million, they're willing to meet it. They know how much Tiketele would expect as a salary package. They've told him they can meet his demands. And that's another thing for those that are saying that he don't want to come. The fact they've had these conversations shows he is open to a move, yeah. but he prefers Milan. So yeah. obviously, like you've said, we need to wait and see if AC Milan will give the money. If not, straight to the kettle, we've already told you, we'll give you what you want, come to the Premier League. So it could move very quickly. It's all on Milan. I think the thing that I hope for is the fact that Sven Botman, was supposed to move to Milan. They couldn't afford him. He's now at Newcastle as a centre-back. So there is faith. You know, there is hope. That's all we've got. And, and, and for those that go, oh, forget about him, move on, move on. Now, this kid's next level. And if we can get him in, then I'm sure you'll be quickly changing your tune. But um, that's why the club are still waiting, bro. Otherwise, I think they'd have already signed Cali or tried on another. Yeah, exactly, mate. We'd have gone, all right, well, we tried. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. On. And... I think fans have got to understand that we're playing in the big leagues now when it comes to trying to sign these young up-and-coming stars. It's not just going to be us sniffing yeah. around them. And yeah. this kid's going to have a lot of advisors around him. And if I was his advisor, and again, if I wasn't a Leeds fan, I'd be like, just hold your horses, kid, and let's just yeah. wait to see what Milan do. Because if you can go there, you want to go there. Yeah. It's just, It's just a matter of fact, isn't it? So... We're playing in the big leagues now, so we're not mm. going to get everyone straight away that we want. No. We're not Champions League, Leeds United at the minute, I'm afraid, as upsetting as that is for everyone. We're still only two seasons back into the Premier League, so everyone just needs to calm calm the passions a little bit, let it ride out. Victor, I'm sure we'll have other targets in mind. We know Cali Moendo, potentially mm. others, but we know CDK is the number one, and if he does yeah. come in... Everyone will be kissing his behind within yeah. three minutes of kicking off the season. So Same. exactly, mate. Just everyone just just chill and let's see what happens. Yeah, definitely. Definitely do that. Listen, Chris, thank you so much for joining me today uh, and giving up your Sunday. Thanks to everyone that watched. We've got over 600 people watching live, which is amazing. So thank you for that. Uh, and if you can smash a like on the stream on your way out, please do. For those that are watching after the facts and stuff, smash a like. We've only got 133 likes. There's over 600 of you here. So please do smash a like. Check out Chris over on All Leads TV and all that content there, the OGs. Um, and, yeah, thanks for thanks for watching. Um, for the week ahead, um, it all depends on what business Leeds United uh, are going to be doing. I, I expect it to happen pretty quick, though, like Chris says. And I'll be back on Friday for sure for a watch along, of course. Uh, we've got midweek fix Wednesday, etc. Just keep it locked. Go subscribe to All Leeds TV as well. And uh, we'll see you in a bit. Thanks again, Chris. Cheers, mate. Thank you.